In this session, I'll introduce you to a tool called the Initiative Log that can be used by managers at all levels. By using a copy of this log in each function, and also at the executive level, it keeps us squarely focused on the important considerations that will allow us to move more quickly and achieve our ambitions. You might recall that earlier this year, Romain gave an update about our ambitious company mission. He and Alain first launched this at the Management Summit in June, which spawned a number of committees, including one about governance and decision making. We know that change is needed to empower everyone to contribute to these ambitions. So let's do a quick recap before I describe some of the changes we'd like you to be a part of. Our mission is to support investment decisions through innovation. We're well-rooted as a technical analysis leader, but we know this is a niche category and expansion is required if we're to achieve our 20 million euro target by 2024. The good news is that we do have broader analytical capabilities that can support investment decisions in other categories besides those where we play strongly today. And we believe that faster paced innovation is required to achieve growth in these areas. So we know change is necessary to achieve our ambitions. This slide is another recap from Romain's presentation and we have very much latched onto the visual offered by the first line. We need to act more like a speedboat than a super tanker. There have been times in our past where we have moved quickly to capture new opportunity. When binary options rose up, we quickly launched a high frequency service and we not only monetized it at the time, but it fo fostered lasting customer relationships even as that specific industry segment winded down. Even further back, I remember we had a customer that needed a turnkey solution that didn't require any integration. So we quickly produced our first newsletter and now that's become one of the top three revenue producers for our business. But as we look to restore this kind of agility at the business level, we need to make sure we're not messy about it. And that's the challenge to all of us. Quickly spotting and building to market opportunity, introducing innovations as a stronger contributor to our growth, but keeping a maintainable technology architecture and a strategic product portfolio. We need to adapt quickly and sustainably. So a committee was formed because we knew we needed to address how decisions are made, the speed at which they're made, how quickly we respond to new information from the market and from our programs and projects and how they're going. So we got together to review the burning issues around decision making. First, we found that we were missing some important considerations. Some decisions seem to not consider revenue or even result in negative return. Some decisions seem to, in fact, reduce value to the customer. In point number two, we found that we were missing some opportunities to act whether because the opportunity wasn't brought about to the right people or uh, we just weren't making decisions at all. Uh, we also found that some activities were disjointed, which slows down the delivery of value in the real world. Different departments may not always be aligning to work toward the same trading central goals. Sometimes there's this tension between uh, the goal being to stick to a plan that we had defined versus the goal being to actually fit to the market and what it needs. And we did find that, generally speaking, we need to drive more input from the market and the needs of users more quickly. Now, we found we could map those burning issues to what would the new world look like if we're making better, faster decisions. So on the first point, we want to make sure that we have a shared view of what are the important considerations to put behind our decisions. And so we're looking for a common view of decision criteria that are aligned to company objectives, things like revenue, the timing of that revenue, and is this decision good for clients? We want more transparency on and around how decisions are made and did we make the right decisions? We want to make sure that there is some consideration of ROI behind decision making where that's applicable and some monitoring of, of um, actually capturing that throughout an initiative and in our activities. In point number two, 
We think it's important to empower everyone to make the right decisions more quickly. And so we're looking for a process that will afford us greater agility in capturing opportunity, uh, but making sure that decision making is appropriate and efficient at all levels. And point number three, we're looking to align activities with a focus on delivering real world value. So we want different departments making decisions towards a common set of goals and desired outcomes. Uh, we want to get, well, when we're undertaking something, we want to get quick feedback on, is this something that customers will actually use and pay for? So looking to craft our programs in a way that's cost efficient to actually get some validation before we move further. So generally, we're looking for some sort of disciplined, structured process that gives us this sense of direction and, and alignment, but making sure that it's lightweight. And personally, I take inspiration from agile development because it is such a disciplined process, but organized in a way to actually make things move, uh, uh, to avoid a lot of overhead and move more quickly. So how is it going for the rest of the world? How's everybody else doing? We're not alone in these challenges, which means we can also learn from how others are trying to solve the same problems. Many are saying that agile doesn't feel agile, and that's because agile development is just one part of the process. We're really great at breaking down work into small bits. We've been doing agile development here since the very beginning. It's in our DNA, but that's just one part of the process. Other, organization, uh, other organizations are seeing the same challenge, that program management with business cases and design phases still feels long. So we need to be agile at the business level too, where we decide what programs are in play. We need to be bringing in more information from our customers and the market at large. We need smaller milestones so we can checkpoint and decide what to do next. This is where we're focusing our efforts in terms of governance process. Next point, it seems that firms tend to have three or four large projects a year, which if you think about it is a risk to any portfolio. In fact, in software development in general, two thirds of features have zero or even negative return, meaning they don't go to market, they don't end up being the right thing, they don't end up making money, or they get canceled. And that's for mature products. For new products, the rate's more like nine out of 10 features have zero or negative value. And we're talking about impressive companies here like Amazon in these stats. So as with your investing, the number of occurrences matters. We'll be looking at how to make more bets Part of that is making the bet smaller at first, and part of that is empowering more of you to be able to know how to pitch your ideas and get them started. All right, next point. A typical scenario for firms seems to be an annual budgeting cycle with a few big projects funded, like we just described. And interestingly, only 24% of those surveyed said they do any sort of economic analysis to make those company investment decisions. So let's be sure to make decisions with stronger measurement of ROI or life cycle profits or uh, impact on the customer. Let's have some discipline around measurement and some monitoring of how we're doing towards those measurable objectives. In other research, it was observed that people writing business cases tend to spend time working with development on estimations. But their Monte Carlo analysis showed that this actually has zero information value when evaluating program success. The most important factors predicting life cycle profits or ROI were actually, you know, what are the chances of this actually getting canceled and how do we know if people will actually use it and pay for it? So in the end, we need to make more bets and we have a lot of smart people here to get involved in spotting those opportunities or in being part of squads that will help deliver the intended value. And part of making bets is having the discipline to plan out how to bet small and double down when there's evidence that we're doing something that's on the right track that will actually deliver, deliver value in the real world. 
Um, at one company I was looking at, they actually classify projects into seeds, plants, and trees. I think it's a good visual to help ward off this problem of scaling something prematurely and allocating the right amount of uh, time and resources into testing whether we're on the right track. If we introduce some sort of routine and lightweight processes to document our decisions and to review progress, in this way we can make sure we're responding to the latest information more quickly and we're allocating the appropriate amount of resources. So we want speedboat flexibility to capture opportunity or to reduce churn while not making a mess and keeping our house sustainable, which, by the way, makes it actually easier to innovate and move quickly. So this is the goal that we set for ourselves as a committee. We're looking for a lightweight process to make high-level decisions about where to invest our resources based on important factors of revenue growth and helping clients and based on comparing cost benefit of alternative approaches. This will include a feedback loop to know if we got it right. Does it help customers? Do they use it? Are they willing to pay for it? Whether we need to adjust our decisions and what we need to change in our decision-making process itself. So we're getting started with a new tool it doesn't necessarily mean that that won't change shape as we move forward and learn. So now we're launching a new tool that can be used at all levels. It's called an initiative log and it contains our decision criteria. Logging initiatives and decisions is a way to increase transparency so people know a decision has been made, an initiative is approved and underway, and people can get behind it and support it. The very act itself of logging decisions may seem like an extra step, but it's meant to be brief and to help us avoid rehashing old conversations that have already taken place so we can just keep moving forward, so we can unstall decisions. In other companies, this is called a program log or a project log, depending on the level where it's applied. But this one has a unique component for us that we call the decision matrix. The decision matrix lays out important criteria to consider when deciding whether to undertake an initiative. Criteria that's adapted from all those burning issues and industry research that we reviewed earlier. This is meant to get more people involved in driving our growth. It adds transparency about what are our shared goals and desired outcomes so that each of you can contribute in ways that only you can think of. And it creates a common language to help people communicate their initiatives and even pitch new ones. So I'll share with you the initiative log template. It's quite simple, a Google Sheet with a dozen columns. There's a description in there of what we mean by each of these columns. Now the executive team will get started immediately using this sheet for significant, sizable initiatives that require cross-functional collaboration. But make sure you're familiar with it. It's an expression of what we value. And you can expect to be asked such questions about projects that you're working on. I'll walk you through the general idea now and invite your questions once you've had a chance to review the sheet on your own. Now in the real sheet, these are actually separate columns, about a dozen columns, and I'm showing them here in groups. First, of course, we identify the initiative and who's the sponsor. The sponsor is someone who wakes up each morning thinking about how they're going to make this a success. They're responsible for keeping people informed and keeping momentum toward the next milestone. So for example, we have a newsletter initiative underway and I'm the sponsor. The next set of criteria keeps us focused on the goal, not our chosen tactics at the time. What's the desired outcome? What have we decided to do to achieve this outcome for now? And most certainly, how does this actually help our customers? Helping customers and delivering Real value is the golden thread that weaves through everything we do. So to put this in context, in my newsletter initiative, the goal is to boost subscribers and not, for example, to boost engagement of existing subscribers. You can see how this would change the projects that we might undertake to achieve the goal. We've decided, as an example, to create new turnkey resources for promotion and sign up. We'll make some small bets, try things out, um, and then have a checkpoint and check 
um, to see if those uh, tactics are working. And if they are, we'll double down. And if not, we'll switch and decide on something else. Now, earlier we talked about the importance of making ROI-based decisions. Um, but you'll also find that exposing some numbers will literally change people's behavior. So, for example, in this newsletter initiative, once we put numbers on the board about how much in revenue dollars we are churning out because of a stickiness issue, it makes the problem or, or the opportunity seem so much more real and, and we're more deliberate and focused with our actions. We've also introduced a point here that's called cost of delay. So you can imagine that if there's no financial or customer impact of delaying an activity, then maybe we can focus on getting others that do have an impact out the door more quickly first. But there's another reason to put this cost of delay item on the board. In many cases, we're trying to use this to create, to actually create a cost of delay. So imagine we have two projects we could start and both are the right things to do. But then you bring me a customer that's ready to pay X amount of dollars a month once we have project A done. Well, now I know which project I'm doing first. So sometimes the idea will be to, in fact, use this as a driver to better communicate our possibilities to stakeholders and get it, creating that demand will actually, that will actually influence our selection of different uh, initiatives and how we sequence them. Now, at the highest level, uh, where, let's say, Alain and Rome are keeping their log of program-level initiatives, this revenue column gives us a reality check on whether we have a sufficient portfolio of initiatives to achieve those great ambitions uh, that were way back on the first slide. The next set of decision criteria is, in fact, identifying the next milestone. The idea is to demonstrate a next step that's an efficient way to make progress to get to validating real-world value. Uh, and this becomes the next checkpoint that decides where, whether we're moving forward and how we're moving forward. We include this in our log uh, as a way to help avoid rehashing old conversations and it lets us get to the point quickly and spend our meeting time on decision making and quick lightweight reviews um, so that so that we can decide whether we in fact have to adjust our plans as new information comes in. Another point to define is what are the risks? What do we not know? What can be, what can be barriers to the success of this initiative? For example, with the newsletter initiative, we know that some of the proposed tactics require customer collaboration and commitment that could take years to manifest for a significant number of customers. And so you can see how making this information transparent and known can at least help to manage expectations, uh, but also drive action to address these risks directly. We also want to make note of who's involved. People responsible for carrying out an initiative have to be involved in the decision making right at the beginning uh, when it's being initiated and throughout the checkpoints. We'd expect that different functions or people will be involved in different initiatives at different stages, which will also help us uh, take on more, move more, and grow faster. Finally, we have a place here to explain how does this align with functional strategies. For projects limited to one function, we remind ourselves to stay on our strategy. For cross-functional initiatives, I see this as a way to make sure we're not messy with the way we move forward. We're circulating with other functions as needed, uh, which in the end game produces efficiencies and alignment that allow us to achieve results in a sustainable way. So this is your introduction to our new tool and how it might help us to operate more like a speedboat than a super tanker. The executive team will have their own copy of this tool to log sizable cross-functional initiatives. Um, managers can make their own copy of this tool, creating that discipline of thinking and communicating in terms of the decision criteria that's important to all of us to achieve our shared ambitions. This log creates the transparency and commitment needed to move quickly. It encourages 
frequent defined checkpoints that allow us to adapt to new information. And for many of you, this actually creates a forum to get your own ideas considered, especially if you're able to communicate how we might efficiently get to that important evidence of real world traction, um, you know, basically planting seeds for greater investment down the road. The next step for each of you is to take a look at the uh, template for this initiative log and get familiar with the decision criteria.